Okay, students, I am going to kind of go over really quickly what I would do to prep, uh, prepare for this project. So hopefully you've already done everything that you're supposed to do from our last week's um, preparation discussion. Uh, first of all, what I did is I pre-stained my canvas. I went ahead and got the, what's this, uh, 12 by 16 size. And it almost exactly fits into the ruler 12 by 16. It's a little bit short. So I just try to take the, the excess and even evenly take it off the edges. And then I'm going to divide this into 16 parts. All right. And then I would do the same thing this way, divide it into 12 parts so that when I put my grid on, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The first thing I want to do is stain my canvas. Now for acrylic painters, this is an, you know, a difficult task. I would take yellow ochre, most likely, depending on your picture. Mine in particular, let's go and get it in here. I see there's definitely some warm spots in here maybe showing through some of the reddish browns. And to me that, you know, instead of being a cool white, it looks to me like it's more of a warm yellow. So I used yellow ochre and I really thinned it out. So to do that, to make my stain, I used about mm, one tablespoon of Galkid and about a half teaspoon of Gamsol, maybe, maybe a touch more but not very much of this, it'll really thin it out. And then just a pinch of yellow ochre. And I put all those things into this pot, stirred it around with a stick or my paintbrush until I got a nice con consistent soupy texture. And I laid my brush strokes on here in both directions. In fact, I even took some paper towel and kind of wiped away some of the excess. So that what I had was a really thin staining. And this will allow me to draw my grid lines on top. Some people try to draw the grid lines below and then they do the stain. Uh, I've had better luck with this way. I just think it works better. Now, as far as what to use to draw your grid lines, this is kind of a bit of a debate and you can, there's pros and cons to different things. For example, if you were staining your ground a slightly darker color, you could use a white charcoal pencil and that tends to disappear into the paint the easiest. Okay. But on this really light yellow, this white graphic, I'm sorry, this white charcoal pencil is not going to show up very well. So I have the choice of either using a really sharp charcoal pencil or graphite. I've had people say that using graphite in a painting is, you know, essentially amounts to a sin and not to ever do it. But I think that really has to do more with how much and how carefully you lay it down. The paint doesn't pull, it, it kind of muddies up more with the graphite if you're not careful. But if you really put very small, incredibly small marks, light marks with a light touch, you should have them sort of disappear. And I might even be able to hit them with an eraser afterwards. So this part's a little important. You know, make sure you line everything up right. Go ahead and make little marks along each one of the sides. Your graphite. You want these grids to be pretty imperceptible to most people, just the person, you, being up close. I'll go over here and do the same. I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me draw a grid, but I do want to show you how light these lines can be. So by really controlling the amount of pressure I put on the end of my pencil, so not pushing down hard with my hand, but really just allowing it to drag lightly across the page of the canvas, I should get a line that's almost, almost invisible. And this will be good enough for me to do my drawing. And then when I'm done with that, I could probably go back with an eraser and sort of take out some of the grid marks. Cause you don't, you definitely don't want those to show through in your painting. I mean, it looks really tacky and dumb. And now of course those grid marks are gonna correspond with the 
grid that you made in your grid proportioner. So you have this nice reference here, and now I can use each one of these individual squares to make a very careful drawing of this person's face and you know, body and garment and the skull. Additionally, I have a black and white version. And this is what you're gonna to use to reference your underpainting. So my plan is, is once this drawing takes shape, once I finish with the drawing part, I'm gonna go ahead and use burnt sienna to do a value painting. Try to do the values of what I'm seeing here. And the black and white really helps you quit focusing on color and paying attention to what's light and what's dark because that's really what you're trying to capture in that first under underpainting, the values, the tonal values. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it now and I'll, I'll bring it back um, once I got this part done. Okay, so I have my grid completed and if I get it up close enough, you can see it. Now these lines are a little darker than I probably would like. I just left them dark so you can see them in the video. But for myself, maybe before I would begin, I'd take something like um, a kneadable eraser, or maybe your fiber castle um, eraser, and maybe just lighten these up a little bit and try and get these excess out of here. Um, but the real trick is using a light touch. If you use a real light touch, you won't have to deal with this too much. Now, of course, this is one of the first layers, so hopefully most of this will get painted over. But with this type of painting, with the old masters, a lot of your planning, a lot of your building up, sometimes is transparent layers. And that means that lines that you leave in here could very well be prevalent. So it is important that you make these disappear as much as possible without, you know, screwing up your, your uh, stain color underneath. Okay, now what I would do is take whichever reference you wish to draw from and start going square by square and recreating this drawing. So I'll show you that once I've gone a little further. Okay, students, um, I just wanted to show you some progress. So again, this is the original and I'm trying to use the grid. I made my grid in graphite. Of course, maybe not the best thing. I can just make light lines with it. But to use, I what I particularly use to draw the person or the figure is one of these Derwent um, drawing pencils. And I'm using oils, so these are actually okay. They're very oily. So they will just get absorbed into the paint really well. And the red's nice because since I'm going to do a reddish brown underpainting anyways, it should just kind of disappear into my underpainting. Um, I have been trying to erase my grid lines as I go. Once I find I don't need them anymore, I start to take them out. And it's, it's I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit of a tedious project, uh, process. If you had a projector, you know, you could save a little bit of time, but you know, we're working from home and I doubt many of you have projectors. So this is pretty much the way that we're gonna have to do this. You know, of course, if you don't do a figure, if you do fruit or something of that nature, it won't be quite as tricky to draw. Um, maybe save yourself a little time that way. But then again, it's art and it just takes time. So you just keep working at it, being patient, trying to be careful and make it look as good as you can. Okay.